Journalist and author Caitlin Rother covers the story. They were down to earth people and Jackie was a housewife and, and Tom always worked, but you know, he was a probation officer and they saved and they invested well in property. So they, they made some money, but they weren't rich. So they didn't have that affectation the way that a lot of people at Newport do. And eventually they duct taped them and blindfold them and put them together back to back. They took them up on the deck. They put them together tied with their hands behind their backs and then tied together. And Tom, I guess, really thought, you know, I want to give one last shot here. So he basically kicked behind him with one foot and got Skylar in the groin. The anchor went down and they went over the side and the anchor pulled them down with the weight. He had devised this crazy, crazy scheme. He went home back to his house and independently called 911 to report that Margo was trying to kill him. As part of this crazy elaborate scheme, he had come up with this idea that he had been an undercover for so long that his brain had split. His psyche had developed this new person named Evil Ed who had come up with this crazy plan to kill Margot. Several times that, that Patricia Cornwell came over for dinner at Margot's house, Patricia Cornwell would hold Margot's hand, and then once they got back to Patricia's room, they would hug. And the third time, they hugged and hugged, and then Margot kissed Patricia. He was basically saying that because he had been in undercover work for so long, and all the stress and strain of the divorce and going to prison and all that stuff, you know, his brain just split. Good evening, Nancy. Thanks for having me on. Kevin's son, um, sorry, Bill's son, Kevin, wasn't even supposed to be home that night, and he heard these shots from downstairs and tried to come down as fast as he could, but with a brain injury, it took him almost a full minute. And imagine his shock to see his father lying on the floor with blood and bullets and his glasses lying there. And even more tragic, he tried to call 911, and, and he did, and the dispatcher could not understand what he was saying. It was heartbreaking. This is News 8 at 11. This is the quintessential story of good versus evil. You've got a law enforcement family versus a law-breaking family. Skyler came up with this idea, no body, no crime. Obviously, greed was the main factor and he wanted to keep his wife happy. They lived in this cramped studio. She was pregnant with their second child. Rother is a former Union Tribune reporter. Her latest book, Dead Reckoning, uncovers new details of the murders at sea. All Tom could do was reach over with his hand. Even though he was handcuffed, he reached over and stroked Jackie's hand. That's all he could do. Rother currently is working on a book about serial killer John Gardner. Rother says her book on Gardner will take an inside look at his family background and what may have led to the murders of teenagers Amber Dubois and Chelsea King. Rather than being so angry and turning a blind eye to the factors that contribute to situations like this, why not try to be proactive and see if there's anything that we can change so that these things don't keep happening. Right. She and her three brothers were placed in an orphanage, and so uh, Jackie Peterson, I didn't actually see this, but I read reports that Jackie Peterson brought this up during the death penalty phase of Scott Peterson's trial that her family had already, you know, gone through this tragedy of losing their father to murder, and then they were raised in an orphanage, and, you know, she had these subsequent health problems, and, you know, please spare Scott's life and our family another, you know, another tragedy. He was under scrutiny. He was the unindicted, uncharged co-conspirator, according to the prosecution. But he, although he's t technically still under investigation, he's never been charged and therefore could not be extradited from Australia, where he's living now. Um, my understanding is he's not been able to find a job in his forensic toxicology field, so that his life has really been devastated by all of this, too, even though you know he's never been officially punished. His, his attorneys say, yes, he has been. He's living under punishment. You know, I wanted to see what was it about this guy that he was able to manipulate everybody, yeah. including Tom and Jackie. What made people trust him? 
And honestly, it was so surprising. He had such a high voice. He seemed so timid and so non-threatening that it was almost like a teenage girl that I was talking to. And if you didn't know anything about him, you wouldn't think he would hurt you either. Yeah. How did that factor into this case? Well, he was basically able to victimize pretty much everyone that he met <laughs> yeah. to get him get them to participate in his schemes, either knowingly or unknowingly, by offering them millions of dollars that he had no way of providing, offering them, you know, appealing to their greed, mm -hmm. essentially, as well.